This is a tutorial on how to boost the loudness of your audio so that it's as loud as most professionally produced content on the internet. At some point in your internet life, you have probably come across a video or something like it where the audio was just way too low. And chances are, if you're not consciously trying to make your own audio as loud as it should be, chances are you have put out something that is not loud enough. So this video is gonna have two separate tutorials. The first is the easy way, which involves using specialized software or plugins that are designed for this purpose specifically. And the manual way, which involves setting up a simple signal chain in whichever program you're using to record or put your content together. And I should also say that I'm gonna be skipping over a lot of in-depth conversations. Anyone who knows me, knows that I really like to get deep into stuff. We're not gonna be doing that in this video. Um, I'm happy to talk more in the comments. If you have like a specific question, I'm happy to even make another video, but also like you know how to use the internet. And for most of the things that you would wanna know more about, there are probably dozens of really good articles and videos online that will explain it for you. Before we get started, I wanna briefly define some terms that I'll be using. Gain refers to how loud an audio input is. So anytime you adjust the volume coming off of your microphone, whether you have a dial on the microphone itself or your audio interface has a dial or a slider, that is adjusting the gain. Compression, to put it as simply as possible, is a process that smooths out the louds and softs in an audio channel or an audio track to arrive at a more consistent sound. And loudness is simply how loud your audio is. Now, you might be asking, well, why did you need to define what, what loudness means? And the answer to that question is that loudness is actually an industry term, and it's become the term that the entire industry uses to talk about this topic. This was not always the case, but in the last couple of years, we've seen all of the streaming services and all of these online platforms coalesce around loudness as opposed to decibels. And loudness is actually something that we measure with a unit called a loudness unit. And we usually talk about loudness units in relation to the full scale. And so that unit is called LUFS. And that's the unit that we are gonna use in this tutorial. It's also the unit that as of the last couple of years, every streaming service is using when deciding on how to process the audio for your content. And finally, limiting is a special type of dynamics processing that allows you to set the limit for how loud your audio is going to be. For the purposes of this tutorial, and, and also this is just my recommendation in, in life, uh, we're gonna set our limiter to minus one dB. The first reason why we use minus one dB is that it is the limit that several streaming services are going to be applying to your audio anyway. And that leaves a good amount of buffer to ensure that your audio does not clip when you export it. Okay, so let's start the tutorial. The first thing you need to know is that each online platform or service, whether it be YouTube or Facebook or SoundCloud or Spotify, each service deals with loudness differently. Some services like YouTube and Spotify will adjust your loudness. They'll bring up quiet content and they'll bring down content that is too loud so that the loudness of the content on their platform is consistent from video to video or from song to song. But even then, YouTube and Spotify do this slightly differently. Some services like Amazon Music are only concerned with making sure that things are not too loud. So they'll turn down tracks that are too loud, but they won't boost tracks that are too quiet. And other services like Facebook and SoundCloud will not touch your audio at all, other than to convert it to whatever format they use. So if you upload something that's too loud or too soft, it's gonna be as loud as you uploaded it. Now, if you wanted to, you could search the internet to find the target loudness, the limit, and things like that, that each streaming service uses, and then export your project a bunch of different times to be optimized for each service. But that really does not seem like a good use of your time. 
And also, not every service publishes their loudness normalization algorithm. So for some streaming services, the only reference you have is people who have tried to basically reverse engineer what these services are doing. It's kind of proprietary level stuff. And so it's just not, it's not worth trying to be perfect for every service. Instead, we're only going to export our project one time at a target loudness that's kind of the average of the different online streaming services. This target loudness is minus 14 LUFs. Minus 14 LUFs is the target loudness that YouTube and Spotify both use in their loudness normalization algorithms. And while other services have a target loudness that is higher or lower, or some don't even have a target loudness, minus 14 LUFs gives you a nice amount of loudness without running the risk of your audio distorting on maybe a smaller speaker or some cheaper speakers that people have turned up all the way or whatever. And, and saying that this is our target does not mean that we want every bit of our audio to hit that loudness value exactly, right? I mean, that's impossible. There's gonna be parts that are a little bit quieter, parts that are a little bit louder, et cetera, right? And so your loudest parts might peak around minus eight or minus seven, and your quieter parts might be in the minus 20s. That's all fine, right? That's just the natural dynamics of your voice. By targeting minus 14 LUFs, what you're doing is you're giving yourself some room to get a little bit louder without risking peaking, right? Or more accurately, without risking hitting the minus one decibel ceiling that you're putting on your limiter, which would cause your audio to sound squashed as opposed to full of life. On the other end, having minus 14 LUFs be your target means that your audio is gonna be loud enough on pretty much every device, right? There will be room for it to be louder. If, if that's something you really need, then you can, you can do another target. You can target minus eight, right? The next thing you need to know, and this applies to both of the techniques I'm gonna show you, is you, you don't wanna turn up the gain on your microphone or on your recording device too much. That's not the solution to this problem. You wanna make sure that you are always in the green with your signal, okay? We're gonna be using software to boost the signal. We don't wanna risk clipping or distorting or all the other things that can happen if your gain is up too high. So you wanna make sure that your gain is in the green. All right, so let's talk about technique number one. And this technique involves using and this technique involves using software or a plugin that is designed to do exactly what we are talking about right now. I generally use Ozone, which is a post-production suite developed by Isotope. I like it for a number of reasons that I'm very happy to get into um, in the comments or another time. I actually have several of their software suites. I highly recommend their stuff. I am not endorsed by them, but that being said, Isotope, uh, feel free to give me a call. So I'll show you how Ozone works, and then I will give you an overview of another product that is considerably less expensive that you might want to consider. What you're hearing now is the source audio. So this is just the sound coming off of my microphone. And I'm going to hit Master Assistant, which is kind of an oxymoron, but okay. You hit Master Assistant, and you have these options. Um, when you set it to streaming over here, that sets the limiter to where we want it, which is minus one dB. And when we set the intensity to low, that's gonna set our loudness target to minus 14 LUFs. Now you're hearing Ozone do its work. It is analyzing the sound of my voice, the loudness in my voice, the frequencies in my voice. It's applying compression, it's applying EQ and dynamic EQ. And what we arrive at at the end is a really nice, very usable sound, right? I mean, this sounds good, right? And it's nice and boosted. And that's it. We have arrived at this pleasing and usable level with almost no effort at all. This is why I recommend Ozone to people so much. Um, I, I tend not to use the master assistant myself just because I, I generally go in kind of knowing the way I want things to sound and I've been using Ozone since version three. So I know a lot about how it works and I've just developed my own 
workflow in it, but it's it's awesome. Now it is not cheap. However, the basic version of it, which is called Ozone Essentials, is considerably less expensive and still has a lot of great functionality. And when you can get it on sale, like I'm recording this the day before Cyber Monday, you can actually get it for a really good deal relative to what you get for it. So let's take a look at one more tool that is designed for this exact purpose. So this is Waves Playlist Writer. And this is a single purpose tool that is specifically designed for what we are talking about. It's usually on sale and it's in a bunch of their bundles. The digital content creator tool box, whatever they call it, is a really, really good deal for what you get. So I'll show you how the playlist writer works. Similarly, you just set your target loudness, which we are setting to minus 14 luffs, and you let it go and it brings your audio up to the correct loudness. Um, the main difference, as far as I can tell, between this and Ozone, besides the price and the fact that, of course, Ozone is a software suite that does a lot more than just this, is that this is doing it through adjusting the volume itself. So it's basically riding the volume, bringing it up and down, almost like you would do if you were touching the volume knob yourself. Whereas Ozone does it through advanced dynamics processing. The Waves Playlist Rider uh, does not do any dynamics processing or compression. So you're going to want to make sure that you're using some compression before the Playlist Rider on your signal chain. You're also going to want to make sure that you set a limiter to minus one dB. I haven't covered compression or limiting yet, and I will when we talk about technique number two. The benefit of using the playlist writer instead of ozone is it will always be adjusting your audio level whereas ozone is going to analyze your audio and come up with a single setting that's going to apply to the entire thing if you have the money you can get both i'm using both right now so the second method is what we'll call the manual method. And this is gonna look a little bit different depending on what program you're using. I'm gonna use Pro Tools just because it's easy for me, but I'm happy to do another one of these for Adobe Premiere or for GarageBand or whatever. Even though it's gonna look a little different, the process is the same. So again, you're gonna start with your pure audio like you're hearing right now. And your pure audio, you want it to be in the green, right? This is coming right off of my microphone. It's not going through anything. It's not going through any plugins or anything. It's just in the green, it's nice, but it's quiet, right? So I always put some compression on my vocals before I do anything else. Um, again, I'm gonna be using an Isotope product, which is Nectar. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I just think their stuff is really good. But literally every program that you could possibly use to create content has some sort of compressor in it. Sometimes it's called Dynamics. So if you don't see compressor, look for dynamics. Your program might even have multiple compressors, like maybe it has a simple compressor and then it has maybe like a tube modeled compressor, which is kind of emulating the way that actual physical compressors operate. For our purposes, these all basically do the job that we're looking to do. And even though each one is gonna look a lot different and they all function a little, a little bit differently, they're all gonna have the same basic settings, which are threshold, ratio, attack, release, and gain, which is sometimes called makeup gain. I'm not gonna get into all these different settings. If you're interested in learning more, this is a journey that you can go down for years. And it's very interesting to me. I would love to talk about it more if, if you wanna hear more about it from me. And, and, the, and the reason why it doesn't really matter is because it's the 21st century and all of these have presets. Now I use Nectar, which is a suite that's just for vocals. So there are dozens of presets. Here's another compressor. This is the one that comes built into Pro Tools. Um, and they have two different vocal presets that are worth using. If you have multiple options to choose from, you'll notice that they have different qualities. Maybe one is a little bit more aggressive and you can kind of tell it sounds pressed. You know, maybe, maybe if you're using a multi-band compressor, there are presets for lower voices or higher voices. You know, I'd say just Play around and find one that sounds good to you, and then you're set. Uh, if you feel like none of these presets are working for you, or if you find one and it's close, but it's just not exactly right, what's probably happening is the input level from your source audio is too low or too high for the threshold that is built into 
whatever preset you're using. So what I would recommend doing is adjusting the input level. There's probably an input level dial or fader or slider. Uh, and adjust the threshold and kind of find the balance that sounds good to you. So we have applied the compression and we have a nice smooth audio signal, but it's still too quiet, right? You've been probably noticing it the whole time that it's, it's still too quiet. So we're now at the point where we need to bring the levels up to our target loudness, which is minus 14 luffs. And we are going to be accomplishing this by adding a second dynamics processor to this channel. Um, you might be asking yourself, wait, when you were kind of fidgeting with that slider a minute ago, it sounded like it was getting pretty loud. Can't I just use the same compressor I used to smooth out my voice? And the answer to that is, well, yeah, you can use one compressor for both of these tasks, but I and many other people strongly recommend splitting up your tasks among different dynamics processors. And it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to tell you exactly how to go about doing this because because I don't know what dynamics tools you have available to you. Um, if you only have one compressor, you can just put on a, sep a second instance of that compressor. What we're really looking for is something that's called maybe a limiter or a mastering limiter or a maximizer. The one thing that I would definitely not do is touch the slider that controls the volume for your channel. There are side effects that this could cause that I, I would rather that not even be like a possibility for you. The one thing that you definitely do need to do, no matter what type of plugin you're going to use, is put a loudness meter on either this channel or, or your master channel, depending on how many tracks you have. Um, every program that I'm aware of has some sort of loudness meter built into it. Um, I'll show you the one that comes built into Adobe Premiere because I really like it. It's super simple and it shows you very clearly where you are in terms of your target. And it's very easy to set a new target, etc. The one that comes built into your program is probably fine. I mean, they, they all do the same thing. So, you know, whatever you have is fine. So in your meter, you are going to set your target loudness to minus 14 luffs. Now I'm showing you the one that I use when I'm recording in Pro Tools, um, and you'll see that we are not at our desired loudness. So what do we do? Well, we're going to be putting another Dynamics processor on this channel. Instead of using one of my more fancy ones, I'm just going to use the one that comes built into Pro Tools. It's called Maxim. So you're going to have this open at the same time as your meter. You're going to set your limit to minus 1 dB, and you're going to adjust the threshold and maybe also the input level until you have reached the point where your meter is reading minus 14 integrated LUFs. Um, you're going to see that the audio will get a little bit louder and a little bit quieter than minus 14 LUFs. That's totally fine. What you're looking for is a general or integrated LUFs of minus 14. If you need more input gain in this dynamics processor, you can just go back to the first compressor you used and adjust its makeup gain. So you're basically pumping the gain in the first compressor if you need to. So that's it, right? You have, you, have, you have completed the task. You have A, recorded your audio at a nice regular volume. It's going in green, so there's not even a hint of maybe peaking. Then you apply your first level of dynamics, which is just a compressor that is smoothing out your sound so that it's nice and smooth. And then you are applying a second level of dynamics. And this is where you are pumping the gain and bringing down the threshold until you have reached a nice equilibrium between the two that sounds good to you and reads on your meter around minus 14 luffs on average. And of course, you're going to make sure that you set your limit to minus 1 dB. Now, of course, this method is more involved than just hitting a button and having a plugin automate this process for you. But what's beautiful is you can just save this. And I recommend that you save this. Save it as a template or save these presets or, or just save the whole project as your baseline project so that you, know, you just always come back to this whenever you want a new one. That way, 
you're going to have the same settings every time. And that means that everything's going to be the same and you don't have to worry about it.